A few years ago, we saw a new segment of vehicles introduced in America called the subcompact SUV. I'm talking about cars like the Subaru Crosstrek, the Jeep Renegade, and the Honda HRV. Now, if I'm being honest here, I was never really the biggest fan of this segment because in terms of space, they really don't offer that much of an advantage over a comparably sized car or hatchback vehicle. But regardless of my opinion, this segment has continued to explode and every manufacturer wants in on this sales pie, which brings me to the two newest additions for 2020. On my right, the 2020 Mazda CX-30 and on my left, the 2021 Kia Seltos, two completely different takes on the subcompact SUV. So the big question I want answered, if you guys have roughly $25,000 to spend, which one of these two is actually the better buy? That's what we're here to find out. So when you look at the Mazda CX-30 and the Kia Seltos, underneath these two crossovers, they essentially are jacked up versions of the Mazda 3 hatchback and the Kia Forte sedan or Forte 5, which isn't yet available here in America. Now, obviously everybody wants a crossover. That's because we like to sit up high. We like the addition of all wheel drive. And I've had a chance to drive both of these already. So having them both side by side is a really cool way to, to show you guys which one of these two different crossovers is the better option. Now let's start with the styling of these two vehicles. I'm gonna go right off and say that I personally think the Kia is the better looking car. This thing has the lines and looks of something like a baby Range Rover Evoque. I especially like the details that you get with this SX trim. I don't like this baby poo vomit yellowish green color, which Kia calls star bright yellow. But if you guys look at the other colors, you really can see just how premium the Kia looks. You can see it's got full LED headlights, LED daytime running lights and turn signals and LED fog lights. Now I will say that the Kia forces you to buy this top of the line SX turbo trim to get the full LED headlights. If you guys go for the baser trims of this car, it has more of a poverty spec look with the halogen projector uh, headlights and fog lights. I also like this cool detail in the grill where there's this LED accented light that kind of follows the uh, tiger nose grill here on this top portion. And then I also love the like kind of like this rough textured diamond look to the actual grill. This is just a very premium upscale look. It has hints of Range Rover, as I said, and maybe hints of the Kia Telluride, which is a very successful vehicle for the company. Now in contrast, let's take a look at the Mazda. Now the Mazda looks more like a lifted up hatchback because when you look at the two cars side by side, the Seltos is actually three inches taller and it has more ground clearance at 7.2 inches versus 6.9. I personally like the traditional SUV looks of the Seltos. The Mazda has, you know, that corporate new Kodo design language that Mazda is very much known for. It usually works on most of their products, but I have to say on the CX-30, the one thing that I hate the most about the styling is this chrome piece here right underneath the headlight. If you look closely at this chrome piece, it actually sticks out further than the bumper and the actual top portion of the front fascia. It just really bothers me for some reason. I really wish that Mazda didn't make it stick out so far. The Mazda comes standard, however, with full LED headlights. This one here has swiveling adaptive headlights. Uh, unlike the Kia where you have to go with the top trim, you can buy the base trim of the Mazda and get full LED headlights. But the Mazda does not offer fog lights like you can get on the Kia. Instead down here, there's the LED integrated turn signals. And then you also have the cladding at the front fascia although the Kia has this interesting kind of almost skid plate aluminum look to the front fascia. So overall, let me know in the comments below which one you think looks better from the front. I'm gonna go boldly and say the Kia is the better looking vehicle. I would just get it in a different color. So when you have these two crossovers parked nose to nose, you can really see the difference in the overall height. The Kia is about three inches taller, as I said. However, in terms of the overall length, both cars are roughly 173 inches long. The Mazda is actually about an inch longer in the wheelbase and in the overall length. Uh, the Kia, however, as I mentioned, is about three inches taller. And you can really tell this car has more of an SUV traditional profile. It has a little bit more ground clearance, as I said. I also like the two-tone option here. Kia allows you to either paint the roof black or white. However, if you get the white painted roof, you can't actually option in a sunroof. This particular one here does not have the sunroof option. I don't like this star yellow color. It just looks kind of like puke green. Kia offers obviously different color choices. What I do like on the Seltos are these wheels. These are the 18 inch wheels that you get on the SX turbo model. They're wrapped in 235 with tires. Uh, Kia also puts in some rear disc brakes and you have a fully independent suspension front and rear, which is a really nice addition. Some of the competitors do a torsion beam semi-independent suspension. Now in contrast, the Mazda 
doesn't look as good as the Kia in my eyes. Now, of course, styling is always subjective. As I said earlier, the Mazda is slightly longer, but you wouldn't really be able to tell from looking at the vehicle. Uh, it really just looks like a lifted up, jacked up Mazda 3 hatchback. And the one thing that I dislike the most about the CX-30 is all of this cladding, because the Kia also has cladding, but on the Mazda, it's almost like a disease. It's just kind of spreading all over the car. And with the machine gray color, you don't notice it as much but stare at one that's painted white and oh my god, I don't like the cladding on this vehicle. It's just overdone significantly. Now the wheels on the Mazda are also equally nice. Some of you may prefer the less busy design of them. They're also an 18 inch wheel, but they're wrapped in two 15 width tires. So the Kia has 20 millimeter wider tires, which is surprising to me because Mazda is typically the sportier brand, but the Kia has bigger wheels and tires. As I said earlier, this car has roughly 6.9 inches of ground clearance. And unlike the Kia, Mazda doesn't offer like those cool two-tone roof combination options, which is kind of a styling trend today. But this one at least has a sunroof, which is included if you guys go for the top of the line. The Kia, it's a $700 option and it's not available with certain color combinations. So from the rear, I'm torn between the looks of these two cars. I like the details on the Mazda. The Mazda gives you full LED taillights. They also have that skinny look to the taillight, which really works on the back end. The turn signal, as you can see, is actually an LED, although it fades in and out kind of like an incandescent bulb, so it looks a little bit strange to me. But in contrast, the Seltos has kind of like an LED combination taillights, but they are a larger looking taillight. I just think the Seltos' rear end doesn't look quite as good as the front end, but I can't really pick between the two on which one's actually the better looking car. They both have lots of cladding here on the bumper part. Now the Mazda's doesn't look so bad because this one is gray. However, if you get a white one, this cladding will stick out like a sore thumb or a disease, as I said earlier. Now looking at the cargo area, the one thing the Mazda has that's an advantage, it offers a power lift gate on this premium model. The Seltos, for any price, you can't get a power lift gate. Now, I should say that most vehicles in the segment don't offer a power lift gate, so I really love that Mazda is including that. However, if you're looking for the vehicle that has more space, that's the Kia. It has roughly 27 cubic feet of space with the seats up. Fold them down and you get 62 cubic feet of space. That's coming close to what you get in some of those compact SUVs. So I love the fact that Kia gives you a ton of space. Now, in contrast, the Mazda has roughly about 20 cubic feet of space with the seats up, and if you fold down the second row, you get around 42 cubic feet of space. So significantly less, nearly 20 cubic feet less than what you get in the Mazda. But overall, I like the fact that the Mazda offers the power lift gate. On the inside, let's start with the Seltos because Kia has really been killing it lately in terms of their interiors. Let me first shut the door. It has a relatively solid sounding thunk, however, there was a slight rattle and that was coming from my garage door clicker. So let me get rid of that and let's try again. It sounds relatively solid, but starting the car up, you can see this particular one here is the fully loaded SX trim. Um, so you get the bigger 10 and a quarter inch touchscreen display here, which includes things like Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, of course. That's what you expect in today's modern world. The SX version also only comes with a black leather interior, which I wish Kia would offer different color combinations. I think they also offer a gray color combination. But um, if you're looking for like a very light kind of ivory beige interior, Kia doesn't offer it on the Seltos. But overall, this feels modern, it feels very tech heavy, and it feels somewhat upscale. The one thing that really works extremely well for me is the infotainment system here, which let me come back to in a second. The dashboard here is a hard touch plastic material, which is kind of disappointing. Down here, it's a soft touch plastic, but it you know, has that faux stitching, which isn't really going to convince anybody. The door panel is also hard touch plastic. So this is where I would rest my elbow. So I'm really sad to see Kia is cost cutting over there. There's a lot of piano black plastic trim in this car, which you know is nice, although it's gonna get fingerprints everywhere. The door panel on the armrest, however, is nicely padded, which is good. The window is only one touch automatic up down for the driver. Every other window is not an automatic up or down. It's power window, but it's not one touch. So that's a little disappointing. The steering wheel, as you can see, it tilts and telescopes, which is nice and the wheel is pretty similar to the one that I tried in the last Forte. It's got a lot of piano black plastic. You've got all these controls here for your cruise control, the drive wise package, which by the way, in terms of driver assistance, the Kia is a little bit behind the Mazda. It comes with features like the drive wise package and adaptive cruise control. However, you have to get this top trim version to get adaptive cruise control with stop and go. The S trim version, which is one up before the base, comes with automatic emergency braking, but then you have to go to the EX trim to get the blind spot monitoring rear cross traffic alert. The Mazda gives that to you as standard equipment. So that's one plus point for the Mazda in terms of safety. Uh, in terms of the rest of this interior, you can see it's somewhat traditional looking. You have single zone climate control. Kia gives you three level heated seats. However, there's a lot of empty buttons here. Uh, and this is where I suspect Kia would offer like 
a heated steering wheel or ventilated seats. It's not available here in the US, which is very disappointing. Over here, you can see there's a wireless phone charger, some storage over there. Uh, which is nice, although it's not covered storage. There's downhill assist control, which is pretty cool considering this is not really an off-road oriented vehicle. But everything in here, for the most part, feels like it's the norm. I mean, the buttons and the switch gear are very similar to the last Kia that I've tested. You have a volume knob here and a tuning knob here. The touchscreen here is very responsive. It's very easy to use. It has features like a sound mood light, which is actually taken from the Kia Soul where the uh, lights in this vehicle will pulsate and change depending on the music and you can also update the color. So this is a really cool, you know, party trick that you can show, you know, show off when you have this car. Uh, the rest of this stuff, you know, it's very easy to use. There's the home screen. It has the Kia um, GPS system here, which is pretty much what you'd expect from a mainstream auto manufacturer. Although Kia has been slowly making this work a lot better. It's much crisper, it's clearer, it's very quick. When you put the vehicle into reverse, you can see the backup camera has very good resolution, although they don't offer a 360 camera, um, but most vehicles in the segment don't offer that as well as not offering any parking sensors and whatnot. But overall, this infotainment system, very easy to use. You can customize the way this looks. I also like how it's a touchscreen. It's right here, very within easy reach. And then my tester here also has a Bose sound system. It's like a nine speaker Bose audio system. It sounds pretty good, although I wish that Kia had used the Harman Kardon system that you find in some of the bigger models. My guess is the Bose they use for a price difference, obviously. Uh, over here on the center console, there's two cup holders, uh, a sliding armrest over here, which a slightly padded lid. And then you open this up, you can see decent sized storage, although there's no um, USB or any power outlets in there. And then the seats, as you can see, this is a fake leather. This is what they call a Sofino black leather trim. You can definitely tell the leather ish material feels fake but it's relatively comfortable and supportive it actually holds you in place nicely so overall the cabin is decent but let's hop into the mazda i want to compare because mazda lately has been going all in on their mazda premium philosophy now mazda lately has been going all in on their mazda premium philosophy and when you get into the cx30 you really see that here now first getting in and shutting the door the door has a more solid sounding thunk than the kia so that gives me a better impression of quality when i start the car up you can see the Mazda's cabin definitely looks and feels a lot more upscale. The seats for me are a huge plus over the Seltos. These are real Napa or premium leather material. They also really have a beautiful color to them. I like this kind of soft ivory with the brown and the black. It's a beautiful combination that offers, you know, a nice tasteful mix of the three colors. The seats are just way more cushy and supportive. The leather feels a lot more supple. It's kind of the equivalent of getting into a Lexus for me. It's a very soft and comfortable seat versus the Kia's is a little bit more firm and you can feel the fact that it's a fake leather on the seat. But the rest of this cabin you can see is very driver focused. Uh, Mazda kind of offers, you know, a big infotainment screen as well. It measures 8.8 .8 inches, so it's a little bit smaller versus what you get in the Kia. And as you can see, it's also pushed way further back. But I do like how Mazda's Apple CarPlay takes up the entire screen. But if you're trying to touch this thing, sorry, it's not a touchscreen. Mazda does not believe in touchscreens. They think that a rotary controller is better and more safe. I kind of disagree with that. I think that they should go with a touchscreen. Everybody wants a touchscreen. They could easily push this screen forward and it would be within reach for me. And that I'm not somebody that has very long arms but in terms of the rest of this interior, it feels like I'm sitting in a pseudo luxury car in here. I mean, the dash here is covered in genuine leather. It's very squishy and padded. This area over here is also soft touch, but it has a faux stitching over here. You have this really tasteful chrome trim that kind of goes along the length of the entire dashboard over here. You have dual zone automatic climate control, so that's better than the single zone you get in the Kia. The vents here also have a really unique design. I like how it's kind of all angled and focused toward the driver. Uh, that stitching over here continues onto the door panel. It's also soft touch here on the upper parts of the door panel with more leather over here. The window switches, Mazda offers one touch for the front windows and one touch for the rear windows. So that's way more than what Kia offers. So really, I'm really happy how Mazda is giving us a lot more of a premium feel. The steering wheel also tilts and telescopes. And it looks like they offer a little bit more adjustability. I like how the Mazda feels more comfortable for me. The seat here is a power, eight-way power, just like the Kia. However, the Mazda offers memory seats. And that's something that you typically don't find in this segment. I just wish that Mazda offered cooled seats. It offers three-level heated seats, but no cooled seats. And there's a button right here for the cooled seats. So I wish Mazda would just offer that. I also wish that they would offer a heated steering wheel. They used to offer that on a lot of their older vehicles. There's two empty buttons over here where they could easily put a heated steering wheel, but sadly that is not available. A heads-up display is also included on this trim level. It's the top of the line model. 
not even available on the Seltos. It's a very rare option, although Kia does offer it on the Seltos and other parts of the world. The infotainment system here, you guys have seen me show you this before. As you can see, there's the Apple CarPlay. It's controlled by this rotary dial. When you go to the Mazda infotainment system, I will say it doesn't. it's not as easy to use as the Kias, and that's why I think Mazda really needs to just offer a touchscreen. As you can see, they've made a lot of improvements here when you go to the home screen, and let's look at entertainment, for example, the audio system. Go to your menu over here. You can show your list of favorites. There's just so many different buckets that you have to go through. You have to go through different menus. It's not as intuitive to use as the Kia's touchscreen, which is just way more straightforward. So I really think that Mazda needs to rethink this interface. When you put it into reverse, you can see the backup camera has a very clear resolution versus the older Mazdas. However, compared to the Kia, it frustrates me how they're leaving all this empty real estate over here. But as you can see, it's got rear cross traffic alert and pedestrian detection. There were kids riding around on bicycles and it actually detected that. But I just wish that the cr screen here was larger and the clarity is not as good as the Kia so that's kind of where there's some disconnect here like the Mazda's interior feels very premium but there are areas where I think that Mazda took a step back and that is one of those areas now looking over here in the center stack you can see there's a USB port over here a little bit of storage but the Mazda lacks a wireless phone charger I'm not entirely sure if you can get that from the dealer but I like how you know there's two cup holders over here so there's a good amount of storage this controls the traditional six-speed automatic transmission there's a very simple drive mode selector it's either sport or it's off. The Kia offers three different drive modes, so that's slightly different. The controller for the infotainment system is down here. It's very much like what you expected from an Audi a couple of years ago. All the buttons in here feel really high quality. They offer it with a nice tactile feel with precision as well. So the overall impression of quality in the Mazda is a lot better. Even the lid here is more softly padded, although it doesn't adjust like it does in the Kia. But when I open this, you can see it slides back, which is a different design. And then you can see here, uh, it's a little bit larger. You have a USB and a power outlet over here. So a little bit more in terms of features. And then above me, Mazda offers a standard size sunroof, which is included on this particular trim. It's nice because it lets in a lot more light, uh, which is good. And then when you look at the glove compartment, you can see the Mazda is, is damped, but it's not lined with felt. So overall, I think I'm gonna have to give it to the Mazda, but I way prefer the infotainment system in the Kia and the fact that it offers wireless charging. This segment of vehicle is not known for having a spacious back seat, but the Seltos actually impresses and surprises you when you first get back here. Kia says you get around 38 inches of legroom, and because this one is a lot taller than the Mazda, I have plenty of headroom as well. There's all LED lighting in this cabin. You get one map pocket on the passenger side, you get rear seat air vents, one USB charging port, and the materials are also hard touch plastic here on the upper, upper door panels. But the seat back here has a nice fold down armrest, uh, which is nice. And the seat back allows you to kind of sort of recline it, not really a recline, but you can't adjust the bench forward and back. But overall, if you actually have to put adults back here or maybe even a car seat, the Seltos has one of the most uh, spacious back seats in the class. So in typical subcompact SUV fashion, the Mazda is considerably more tight as I get back here. I actually had to duck my head because the roof is so low. But once you squeeze your way back here, Mazda says you get around 36 inches of legroom, two more or two less inches versus the Kia. But in the real world, it feels a lot less. I mean, the bench definitely feels a little bit more narrow. I have less headroom, although this one has a sunroof, which does eat into the headroom. Mazda also includes LED lighting in here, which is nice. The door panel materials are hard touch plastic, so it's not as nice versus what you get in the front. Mazda also gives you uh, rear seat air vents, which is here, which is nice, but no USB port. Although sometimes Mazda would put a USB port in here, but there's no storage option over here. So there's no USB ports in the back. In the Kia, you did get one, but overall the Mazda's rear seat is very tight. I mean, it's better versus the Mazda CX-3, but if you actually need to put full-size adults or a car seat back here, you're better off with the Seltos. Because these two crossovers are based off of compact cars, their powertrains are going to mirror closely what you're gonna find in like a Mazda 3 or a Kia Forte. Let me start with the Mazda CX-30. This has the company's tried and true 2.5 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder with direct injection. That's what Skyactiv G stands for. We have seen this engine in production for nearly 10 years now, and it makes 186 horsepower and 186 pound-feet of torque. Those are very good numbers. Actually, Mazda claims it's the most powerful numbers for for a base engine in the segment. It all goes out through a six-speed automatic transmission. So no CVT, no dual clutch, no manual. And Mazda offers the option of either front-wheel drive or you can get it with the car's Skyactiv or the company's Skyactiv all-wheel drive system, which is one of the better all-wheel drive systems that I've tested so far. And fuel economy sits at around 25 in the city, 32 on the highway. Regular gas is recommended. It has roughly a 13-gallon gas tank. And as this one sits,
sits, it weighs around 3,400 pounds. This car is not, however, rated to tow. Most vehicles in this segment aren't able to actually tow anything. Now, in contrast, the Kia offers a choice of two different powertrains. Now, the base engine is the, is the engine you're going to find in the base Forte. It's a two-liter four-cylinder with 147 horsepower. Most of you are probably going to go for the upgraded engine, which is what I like seeing in this segment because most vehicles are very underpowered. The Kia, however, is not. It has the company's 1.6-liter turbocharged gasoline direct injection four-cylinder. We've also seen this engine in production for quite a few years now, and in the Seltos, it makes 175 horsepower, which is actually about 11 less than what you get in the Mazda, which is non-turbocharged, but it has a bigger engine. However, this makes significantly more torque, 195 pound-feet, so it's about, you know, 10 more pound-feet of torque versus the Mazda, but you have like 60 more pound-feet of torque versus the base engine in the Celto. So this is the engine that's gonna feel a lot more powerful in daily usage. Now it all goes out through a one choice only, a seven speed dual clutch transmission. If you guys go for the base engine, it has Kia's IVT, a continuously variable transmission. Kia also offers a choice of front wheel drive on the base engine. However, on the turbos, they only come standard with all wheel drive. So you don't have to actually option it in like you do on some of the competitors. Now fuel economy is very comparable to the Mazda. It's rated at 25 in the city, 30 on the highway, 27 combined, so the same combined rating. Uh, even though this is a turbo, it's also just recommended to use regular gas, so you don't have to put premium. It also has a 13-gallon gas tank, and Kia says this one, as it sits, weighs around 3,300 pounds, so it's about 100 pounds lighter than the Mazda, and it also doesn't tow anything. So even though driving may not be quite as an important factor for people who are looking to buy an SUV, these new smaller subcompact sport utility vehicles are based off of compact cars, which have always been slightly more sportier to drive versus you know the bigger vehicles that people oftentimes replace these smaller SUVs with. So let's first start off the driving scene in the 2021 Kia Seltos. Now I first drove this car a few months ago, earlier this year when I was in Texas, I believe, when I was driving this car. And I came away pretty impressed. I mean, I was really impressed with the last Kia Forte GT that I drove, which essentially has this powertrain, but it's been detuned slightly in the Seltos to make 175 horsepower and 195 pound-feet of torque. Now, obviously, those numbers are not going to, you know, set your world on fire. These are not, you know, amazingly fast numbers. But for the segment of vehicle, this is actually very good power, especially the torque, 195 foot uh, pound feet of torque it's mated to a seven speed dual clutch transmission um, it has a sport and a manual mode but no paddles on the wheel i was kind of expecting paddles on the wheel considering you know this the seltos looks and drives as sporty as it does now the first thing i do want to comment on is the fact that the seltos is a very relatively comfortable car actually even though we've got these 18 inch wheels you know we've got um, a car that looks like it's a sportier car on smooth pavement like this it is a very refined ride uh, it has a relatively quiet interior as well and you sit up nice and high it doesn't feel like i'm driving in like a lifted up hatchback like some competitors we'll talk about that in the mazda in just a second but overall you feel like you're driving a traditional suv almost The seven speed dual clutch also is a very decent partner for the engine. The seven speed, as you guys know, uh, Hyundai and Kia have gotten some criticism in the past over this transmission before. They have been making steady improvements to it. And this latest version shifts better than the last one that I sampled in the Kona. It's very similar to the Forte GT. It, is smooth enough to make you forget that you're driving a car that has a dual clutch, but there are also times where you do notice that the transmission can stumble a little bit at lower speeds, or if you find yourself putting your foot down at a random opportunity, you can confuse the transmission at times. Now there is a noticeable delay when you first put your foot down. That's from the dual clutch trying to figure out what gear it's in, from the turbo that needs to spool up, obviously, but once you pass 3,000 RPM, the Seltos has very good power and you should get to 60 in around seven seconds for this thing, which is quick for the segment. I mean, the Kona is basically as quick as this. Um, other turbo options, 
they're kind of few and far between, obviously. I mean, the Fiat 500X, which I also just drove, that also has a turbo, but the nine-speed auto is a far worse transmission than the seven-speed dual clutch. So the Seltos definitely gets, you know, my recommendation if you guys are looking for power in this segment, because power is hard to find. Most vehicles are mated with CVTs and they're just lethargic. So this turbo engine is a great partner. The rest of the driving dynamics for this thing, I've got seats that are relatively comfortable. This Sofino fake leather you know, obviously isn't fooling me, um, but I do think that it's comfortable enough. And you know, some of you who prefer not to have real cowhide will really appreciate the fact that this is a faux leather. The visibility in here is also great. I can see over everything very nicely. The side mirrors are large. The driver assistance tech, even though it's not standard in all the trims on the Seltos, works fairly well. Uh, the lane keep assist, as you can see right now, the steering wheel icon is green. It actually does stay in the lane for me. It keeps me centered in the lane. And as we approach this curve here, this gentle curve, you'll notice, I'll leave my hands off the wheel, the car actually steers for me around this gentle curve. After a few seconds, then it starts to yell at you to keep your hands back on the wheel. It has adaptive cruise control with full speed stop and go, although it's limited to this trim. I also have blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert. So lots of great safety tech, a refined ride, plenty of power, lots of room in here. Um, so if you guys are looking to upgrade from like your soul, uh, this is a really great addition. If you're also looking at the Sportage, which is technically a bigger vehicle than this, it's about five inches longer. This is also a nice addition because, you know, the Celtus is a newer vehicle. Uh, it's got this 1.6 turbo, which you can't get in the Sportage. Um, and it's just a really good all around daily driver that I think a lot of people will find plenty to like. And it also looks really nice too. Now, fuel economy, that's often a very high consideration for people in this segment. In my week's worth of testing with the Seltos, I was averaging around 24 MPG in mostly city around town driving, which is not bad. I mean, it has plenty of torque, so you're not dipping into the throttle all the time. And the engine has a relatively refined note. It doesn't sound like it's struggling. And because it has so much low end pull, you're not having to push the engine so much to actually get this thing up to speed. So. A lot of people are gonna find a lot, like plenty to like with this car. It's not what I would say the sportiest driving. I mean, the steering in the Seltos doesn't really transmit as much feedback as what I got from the Forte, but it's electric, uh, electrically assisted. The vehicle has a quick ratio. It changes directions pretty well. The suspension has a little bit of body lean, but you know, it's not, it's not a sports sedan, obviously, or a spark compact. It's just a subcompact SUV that has some off-road capability, um, but Really, I'm super impressed with the way the Seltos drives. Would love to see Kia, you know, think about doing an X-Line version of this or a GT line. I think that'd be a really great addition. But let me hop into the inside of the Mazda and see how it compares to this. Moving into the driver's seat of the 2020 Mazda CX-30, I will tell you this right away, it feels like I'm sitting in a luxury car compared to the Kia. The materials in here are just a little bit nicer. The seats are more comfortable. The door panel materials are softer. The colors and different textures, um, they all just look nicer. It makes for a much nicer environment in the CX-30. I also feel like I'm driving more of a car, a hatchback, because I don't sit quite as high. Uh, visibility, however, is not quite as good in this car compared to the Seltos, because you've got this pillar here that's a little bit thicker. Uh, the side mirror is a offers a good view, but there's something about this car that just feels a little bit more closed in. I don't feel quite as open as airy. I don't have that commanding view of the road. Um, so that could be a problem for those of you who prefer better sight lines. Now, this car does feel more like a luxury car versus the Kia, but th it also feels like a luxury car with a couple of compromises, which we'll, we'll talk about in just a moment. But what I do like in this car compared to the Seltos, it has a heads up display, which is really cool. It's got dual zone automatic climate control, which is nice. It has memory seats as well. Memory seats is not something you find in this segment. I also love the power lift gate in the back, but what the compromises are with this car is the fact that it doesn't have a heated steering wheel, which the Seltos lacks as well. It doesn't have cooled seats, which for the way this car feels and for the more expensive price tag, I expected to find cooled seats and a uh, heated steering wheel, especially, you know, right now we're coming up on summer. It says it's 88 degrees outside. It'd be nice if this car or one of them had cooled seats. And the infotainment system is not as nice or as clear or as sharp or as intuitive as the Seltos is. I mean, I don't understand why Mazda doesn't, doesn't just give people what they want and give us a touchscreen. The 
8.8 inch display over here obviously is a huge improvement over what you find in the CX-5 or the CX-3, but there's all this unused real estate over here where Mazda could have expanded the size of the screen. They also could have pushed it closer and made it a touch screen, which would have been nice as well. Uh, the driver assistance tech in the Mazda also is standard across all the trim levels, which is nice. You also have blind spot monitoring, or cross traffic alert, but I will say that the lane keep assist in this car is not as good as the Kia's. Uh, the Kia, for example, it would follow and keep you in the lane um, without even having to turn on the adaptive cruise control. Here in the Mazda, I can't do that. Like the Mazda has lane departure alert, but the, the, adapt, the lane keep assist really will just wait for you to kind of touch the line and it'll buzz the wheel and just kind of shove you back over. It's a rather unrefined system versus the actual lane centering that you get in the Celto. So there's kind of a give and take over here. There's compromises that Mazda obviously has to make considering the fact that they aren't a premium brand but you definitely feel like you're driving a more car-like car and you'll also, you might also find the seats in the Mazda to be more comfortable. Now, unlike the dual clutch in the Kia, the Mazda makes do with a standard six-speed conventional torque converter automatic. This transmission, they've been doing it for almost a decade now. It was a very great transmission then and today it's still a good transmission it's no longer a great transmission it is a little bit slower to shift than most of the eight speeds on the market it also has somewhat wide spacing because it only has six gears and this 2.5 liter engine Mazda likes to make claims that it's the most powerful engine in the segment which I guess if you look at the numbers it is although the Kia has slightly more torque however the way that Mazda delivers those horses is where I have an issue because the turbocharged competition have a much more effortless feel because of all of the low end torque. In the Mazda, if you switch it over to sport mode here, sure, you've got 186 horsepower, but... When you start pushing the engine, it just sounds like it's being labored. It sounds like you're thrashing the engine. It's a rather unrefined noise that for me, I don't like it. It just sounds like the engine is constantly struggling and that's not a characteristic that I associate with Mazda. They've always had very peppy four cylinders that just sounded better, that liked to rev. This engine is a big engine, obviously. It's a 2.5 liter four cylinder. Most engines have gone smaller, like the Kia has a, an engine that's almost a liter smaller in displacement that's helped by turbocharger. Now, what Mazda does give me are paddle shifters, which I like the fact that it gives me paddles, gives me direct control of the six speed. The paddles, however, are a little slow to respond and they also will start to upshift for you when you aren't touching them, but you can sl slap the shifter into a manual mode here. And you can see there it kind of started to downshift a little bit better. And Mazda says that you should probably get to 60 in this car around seven and a half seconds. It's about a half second slower than the Kia. Now, obviously nobody buys a vehicle like in this segment for zero to 60 performance. That just doesn't matter. However, I believe in the real world, the Mazda feels more sluggish because it's a naturally aspirated engine and I have to basically build the revs on it to get it to go uh, with the same kind of gusto that I get from the Kia. Now the six speed auto is a smooth transmission. It's a little bit smoother than the dual clutch in the Kia, but it also is slower to shift. So what do you want? Do you want a smoother transmission that shifts slower or do you want uh, a little bit of a more firmer shifting transmission but that shifts much quicker so it's really just going to come down to your taste although i will say the kia's powertrain performs like how i expect a mazda to versus this powertrain performs like how i expect a kia to so we're just in this really weir weird world where a mazda is driving like a kia and a kia is driving like a mazda You can feel even at the top end, I'm noticing that the Kia has more pull. This car feels sluggish, whereas I never thought that the Kia felt sluggish at all when I was driving. I mean, yeah, it was a little slow initially when you put your foot down, but then the turbo kicks in at three grand and it just goes like crazy. And it's a fun experience. The car feels fast. This does not feel fast, and that can be a little bit of a disappointment for me. Now, what about handling? Mazda is very good at that. They typically build very sporty cars to drive, and that's where Mazda has lost sight of their focus a little bit in some of their mainstream cars. The electric power steering in this car is really light and numb. Now, the ratio is fine, it's quick. Uh, the suspension stays 
it's a little soft, a little soft, but it's a little firmer than the Kia suspension, I wanna say. But I'm just noticing, I don't feel like this car is, you know, a reminiscent of Mazda who used to have the zoom zoom tagline. It just, it feels a little bit muted. And that's kind of my issue with the Mazda 3. It's carried over into the CX-30. It's not a bad driving car, but I don't, particularly think this is the sportiest anymore. I believe the CX-3 drives sportier than this because because it has a little bit heavier steering. It's a slightly smaller car uh, in terms of handling I'm talking about. But uh, the ride quality I'm noticing in the Mazda also isn't quite as well controlled as it is in the Kia. You do have that semi-independent twist beam at the back now because Mazda did replace the multi-link independent suspension. Uh, there's also a fair amount of road noise, maybe more than the Kia. You also hear a little bit more engine noise because the engine's constantly laboring. So yes, the interior feels more luxurious in this car and slightly more cramped, but you do have a little bit more engine noise and a little bit more road noise. So that doesn't really translate into the whole package of luxury, which is why Mazda, you know, Mazda Premium needs to kind of get there fully. They're only there halfway or maybe 75% of the way, but they're lagging behind in the tech. They're lagging behind in the effortless feel of the engine and for the interior quietness. And they also need to address the space. This car doesn't feel cramped for me, but when you just stepped out of the Kia with its more open and airy cabin with its higher seating position, the CX-30 definitely feels a little bit on the smaller end. Now, what does shine about the CX-30 is the fuel economy. I got a little bit better gas mileage in this versus the Kia. Uh, it got around 25 mpg in my mix testing, which is not much different, honestly. It, it's push in the real world. You're not gonna really, no really notice a difference, uh, but I just prefer driving around town in the Kia more because its engine is not so labored sounding like it is in the Mazda. So as much as I dislike the segment of subcompact SUVs, I have to admit, after spending some time with the CX-30 and the Seltos, these are two welcome additions to the segment. The Mazda CX-30 is actually a surprising drive for me because I like this car more than the current generation three. It's actually less expensive than the current three. It has the same wonderfully premium interior with the nice materials as the three. And even though I don't like the look of this thing, the cladding has just gone overboard. I think the front fascia with that chrome uh, part that sticks out further than the headlight looks really unattractive. The CX-30 is a welcome addition because it's just so much better versus the Mazda CX-3, which I'm surprised this car didn't replace it, but I think Mazda has a winner on their hands with the CX-30. It fills that Mazda premium void or premium expectation that you have with Mazda as a brand, and it's also a still relatively sporty driving car. Now, in contrast, the Seltos has a much more rugged look to it. it Reminds me a lot of like a baby Kia Telluride and maybe even a Range Rover Evoque. I like the way the Kia looks far more. I also like the turbocharged engine in this vehicle. Even though it's not quite as smooth as the powertrain in the Mazda, the Kia is half a second quicker. It has more, way more low end torque, so it just feels faster off the line in daily usage. And I also like all the interior space that the Kia gives you. So I might overlook the cheapness in the interior because you still have most of the tech features that you expect but really they just are so very different. They're two completely different takes on a subcompact SUV from two completely different manufacturers. So between the two, which one do I actually think is the better option? For me, I'm gonna to have to go with the Seltos, even though it's not as luxurious and sporty as the Mazda. I think the interior space, the look, the warranty, the tech features that you get. However, there is an asterisk there because you have to get the highest trim level. So I think Mazda has kind of built in more value. Now, speaking of which, what is the pricing of these two vehicles? That one there is around 31,670. This one here is around 29,700. So the Mazda is $2,000 more expensive. Now, of course, the Mazda does come with some features that the Kia doesn't have, namely a sunroof, a power lift gate, uh, the paddle shifters on the inside, and just a nicer quality cabin. So really, if you added the sunroof to the Kia, there's a $1,000 price difference. And for a lot of you, that might be the swaying factor for the Kia because this car just has generally more space on the inside. I think it's an easier car to live with on a daily basis. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my comparison test between the Kia Seltos and the Mazda CX-30. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.